Welcome to the Campus Edge, a production of Butler Community College. Produced by students and for everyone, students included. The theme of today's program is food and entertainment. Two of my favorite topics. Things that make us feel good here on the Campus Edge. I understand from the old students in the program that Campus Edge 4 is traditionally the food and entertainment show. So to keep the tradition alive, we'll first look at the wonderful world of salads. When I think of college food, healthy salads don't normally come to mind. I'm more of a ramen noodle kind of guy myself, but G Lozani is here to show us everything green. My name is G and today we're going to try some salads out from McDonald's, Walmart, Dylan's, and Taco Bell. Yo, what's up? I'm Adam. Glad to be joining. Get all this free food. <laughs> This one is from Walmart, and it cost three dollars and twenty cents. All right. You want to open it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna open it. Jesus. Just gonna add all the ingredients. You know, they portion it out for you. Luckily, gotta make sure you get everything. Yeah. Cheers. Cheers. Not bad. It's not bad. Definitely not good though. I like it. Like, it's just really bland. Yeah. I need a bunch of salt, pepper, maybe something else. From zero to one to five. Zero to five? Yeah. I, I'd go, because of the price, it was really pretty cheap. I'd go probably about a three. Three? Okay. I would, yeah, I would give a four. Four? Yeah, four. Mm. This one is from the Mac, from McDonald's, and it's a pretty decent size, I would say. Mm -hmm. For we got the grilled chicken, you know, to keep it a little, oh man, a little more seasonal. We got a lime here. This is some grade class A stuff. Just squeeze Oops. that lime into there. Really nice. Is this beans? Yeah, those are beans. Yeah. Oh man. Beans, That's corn. There's tacos as well. Yeah, yeah, a little Fritos. Oh man. We got this Southwest sauce. All right, okay. cheers. Mm. Mm. This one is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm pretty surprised. Me too. Wow. I'm glad I got the grilled chicken. I feel like, I mean, the, yeah, this is grilled. The crispy yeah. chicken, it wouldn't have fit with like all the no. seasoning. Zero to five. Zero to five? Honestly, I don't think I give a perfect five. But like a like, can I do like 4.7? Mm -hmm. If I can't do like intervals, then 5. But if I can give it a 4.7, <laughs> you 4 would. Yeah, 4.8. Final, final order. 4.8? Okay. I think I would give a, a 5 fat kids. 5 fat kids? Yeah, I think that's. Yeah, you know, if fat kids ate this, they'd probably still be fat. Like, this thing <laughs> is huge. Let's, is. let's just say that. But, you know, it would help. This one is from Dylan's. It has a pretty decent size. It looks simple, but it's a chicken Caesar salad. Alright, ting. Mm -hmm. Um, it was alright. I feel like we may have gotten it towards the end of its shelf life. Mm -hmm. Like this may have gone bad here in like a couple of days. Because mm -hmm. the, the salad itself, like the actual lettuce doesn't taste the best. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I uh, personally, I liked it better than the Walmart one. So I'm going to have to give it 3.2. Yeah. So I think this one is like a 2.5. 2.5? Yeah, that's mine. 2.5. Yeah. I mean, it's perfectly acceptable. And it's but the it most was, expensive one. Is... Yeah. yeah. And the, the McDonald's one, I mean, <laughs> twice, like eight times as good as this. This is the last one, and it's the Taco Bell one, and the packet is really nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay. All right, this one's gonna be hard to ting because oh, it's all gonna fall off. Okay, clip. Shoot. This tastes like every Taco Bell taco I've ever had. <laughs> That's all it is. <laughs> like, 
it just on it to me it just tastes like a taco. So if you're trying to go healthy, it, this is definitely not the best yeah. option. I think. I mean, it has a lot of bad stuff in it. Yeah. I'm a little bit disappointed because it seems like the beans and the meat are kind of like cold and. I don't know, it's kind of old. I mean, it, we didn't get this that long ago. Mm -hmm. Like, we pretty much got it and then headed straight here. Mm -hmm. So four out of five would probably be the flight nope. rating. Okay. Yeah, I think I'm going to get a 4.5 because I, I personally liked it. But if we're going for a salad, like, trying to get healthier, yeah. I don't think that would be an option. I think. All right, that's all we have for today. And um, let's go back to the anchors. Everyone has their favorite comfort foods, but sometimes you want to try something different. I agree. And going out doesn't mean you have to break the bank. Mother County has a lot of great dining options. One of the best is Beijing Bistro, and I believe this is your story. You can't talk about Beijing Bistro without talking about Steve Chin. So, let's hear about the restaurant in his own words. I am here at Beijing Bistro where I sat down with Steve Chin to discuss what it takes to run a successful business. From prepping the kitchen to making customers happy. Let's see what he has to say about this. I'm a manager. The most stressful part of being a manager would be uh, trying to get good help and hire good help and make sure that they're working and on time. The, the most busiest time for me would be the peak hour, the, doing lunch. Uh, I would say around the uh, start from 11.30 to 1.30. That's two hour window and then also dinner time will be um, uh, somewhere around 5.30 to, to 8 o'clock. Everything's made from scratch and we'll, we'll prep and we'll sell the lunch and then we'll prep again about 2.30 uh, when, the, when the lunch is down. By, by the end of the day they clean up and make sure the kitchen is sparkling clean. Now we know it takes a lot to prepare for dinner, lunch, all from the kitchen. So next time you need to cook. This is an after pressure reporting for BCC TV. After two stories on food, you might be hungry, but don't take too long in the kitchen. We've got more great stories coming up after this spot break. This is the story of a boy who is very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Look at you. You're at the top of your game. You're unstoppable. Nothing can throw you off track. Wait, is that your car? Uh-oh. Yeah, I saw that coming. That will throw you off track. You're looking at around 10 grand in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Let's try this again. Smart move. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Being a dad is an adventure full of special moments. A cruise? Right. Unexpected moments. I got this. And even awkward moments. Okay, Dad, thank you. <laughs> but every moment you spend with your kids, <laughs> even the smallest moments, <laughs> can make the biggest impact on your child's life. So take a moment to be a dad today. <laughs> Ashley, what comes to mind when you think of comfort food? Wow, that's a good question. I have so many, especially with the holidays coming up. For me, one of my favorites is picadillo. That's Cuban, isn't it? A lot of Latin American countries have their versions, but I think my family's take on picadillo is the best. For those that have never tried it, you're in for a real treat. Let me share an authentic Cuban comfort food with you and see what you think. Hello, my name is Erica Diaz and I am a student reporter for the Butler Campus Edge. I wanted to spice things up a bit this week and give you guys a little taste of some Cuban cooking. Let's take a look at how I make one of my favorite Cuban dishes, picadillo.
To start off any at-home meal, make a list of ingredients you need and go to your local grocery store to ensure you have everything to make your Cuban dish. The ingredients used to make our family's recipe of picadillo are two green peppers, one half white onion, black beans, white rice, olive oil, tomato sauce, two garlic cloves, cumin, salt, and pepper, and one pound of ground beef. To start things off, begin by preheating your rice cooker. Then when it is ready, place the rice and water inside to cook while you prepare the rest of the food. After cutting up your vegetables, pour them into the pan and begin to stir until the onions look transparent. At this point, you can add black beans into your rice cooker. Then you can add your ground beef and stir into the meat until the meat is cooked. Once cooked, you can now add your tomato sauce, cumin, salt, and pepper. My family's secret recipe, wine. Once this step is complete, you can enjoy your dish of picadillo. That picadillo looks so good. I could almost smell it through the television. Every time I make it, it reminds me of my family. Now that we've covered the food portion of the show, how about an entertainment story? Good idea, Ashley. College students don't have a lot of time for entertainment, and when we do, we're usually broke. Finding options that fit our budget and available time can be tough. Seth Campbell rides to our rescue in this next story. Soup went bin diving at a local store and discovered programming guarantee to distract you from the important things in life. Relationships and family? No, homework. Hi, I'm Zeb Campbell from the Campus Edge. Have you ever been to Walmart and seen that big $5 movie bin and you just don't know what to choose? Well, I chose three random movies and I'm going to give you a minute review on each one of them. Up first we have Dirty Dancing. Originally a low budget film by a new studio, Vestron Pictures, Dirty Dancing became a box office hit. As of 2009 it had earned over 214 million dollars worldwide. It was the first film to sell more than a million copies on home video, now that's VHS. And the Dirty Dancing soundtrack created by Jimmy Leonard created two multi-platinum albums and multiple singles including I've Had the Time of My Life, which won both the Golden Globe and Academy Awards for Best Original Song, and a Grammy Award for Best Duet. The film popularity led to a 2004 prequel, Dirty Dancing Havana Nights, and a stage version which has held sold out shows in Australia, Europe, and North America. My rating, I give it about a 72.45, just don't put baby in a corner. Up next, what I chose out of the bin is Duck Dynasty. It's a reality TV show that originated on A&E that portrayed the lives of the Robertson family who became successful from their family-operated business, Duck Dynasty. The West Monroe, Louisiana Robertson men, Phil and Cy, and Phil's sons, Jace, Willie, and Jeff, are known for their long beards and full camo garb. The show earned $80 million in advertising for the first nine months of just 2013 and merchandise sales have generated another $400 million in revenue. The series ended on March 29th of 2017 and the Outdoor Channel acquired the rerun rights. 
As for rating, you either love it or hate it, and there's no in-between, so I give it a solid 50%. The last movie out of the bin is 2012, where the movie was actually made in 2009 and was directed by Roland Emmerich. The film was produced by Centropolis Entertainment and distributed by Columbia Pictures. Filming originally planned for Los Angeles began in Vancouver in August of 2008. The plot follows novelist Jackson Curtis as he attempts to bring his family to safety amid a worldwide of disaster. The film refers to Mayanism and the 2012 phenomenon of its portrayal of the world just basically crumbling. This behemoth of a movie only encompassed two awards for Best Sound and Best Visual Effects at the Satellite Awards. As for a rating, you get plenty of thrills throughout the movie, but it's just lacking that something I can't put my finger on, so I give it a solid 60%. Well, that's all the time I have here on the Campus Edge. I went to Walmart, chose three movies out of the bargain bin. Trust me, there's probably some better movies in there, but if you ever stop by, try one of my choices. From BCTV Channel 20, I'm Zeb Campbell. In our final story coming up, we take a look at our very own E.B. White Art Gallery. You won't want to miss it on the Campus Edge. I'll never forget the day our landlord called and said, read your lease. No pets allowed. My owner tells him my dog ate the lease, but that didn't work. And now I'm stuck in a shelter, but this pit bull is ready for a new crib. I'm loving, loyal, and play well with others. So don't be intimidated by all my muscles, because the biggest one I have is my heart. <laughs> That's right, I said it. Teen Titans go to the movies. They know the best way to travel is safely. To keep your child safe, be sure to use the right car seat for their age and size. Exactly. Hollywood, here we come! The Atom has arrived! Have a seat, my dude. For more information on finding the right seat, visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Impressive. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. But that was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. Our last story for today continues the entertainment theme of our show. The E.B. White Art Gallery has hosted a number of exhibits, receptions, and events on the El Dorado campus. Patrons can enjoy art expressions from a variety of professionals, faculty, and students. I think it's a great addition to the fine arts experiences available at Butler. Since we started the show with a story from G. Luzani, it makes sense to end it with his take on E.B. White Art Gallery. My name is Guilherme, and today we're going to see and talk about the new art gallery we have here in Butler Community College. The exhibit on display currently in the gallery is an exhibit titled All is Fair in Art and Politics. The artwork they submitted had a political theme. Students a chance to come into the gallery and really participate in the political process. And so since this year is a midterm election year, I thought it might be nice to revisit that political theme. I've been making artwork since I could hold a pencil. Um, so, um, art has been my passion my entire life. I never knew, you know, had to ask, you know, or think about what do I want to be when I grow up. I, I just knew it was going to be an artist. And so, um, I went to school, went to college, got a couple of degrees in art, um, actually started teaching at Butler when I was 22 years old and have been doing it ever since. And I, I really love teaching and I really love uh, being involved with the gallery. I might be a little bit biased. I actually have a couple of pieces in this exhibit. Um, there's a, a piece in the exhibit titled The Pessimist Index, and it was a collection of artists, and we were all asked to use the front page of the Sunday newspaper. And so there were a lot of artists from Wichita that participated, and so a lot of the newspapers are the Sunday edition of the Wichita paper. And we were asked to use very specific colors 
um, of colored pencils, and we were to color in the text boxes based on how we felt about the article. So we'd use a bright yellow if we felt really cheerful and happy about the article we were reading, or we might color the, the text box gray if we felt neutral about it, or maybe it would go all black if we felt pretty bad and pretty depressed about the article. And it's interesting to see how um, artist responses are similar in some cases and how, some, how they're, they're different in other cases. So it's, it's kind of a neat comparison to make. And I have two Sunday pages in that installation. And then I have a personal connection to, there's a, a really large Trump drawing in the exhibit, and that was made by my husband, who's a retired art teacher from Butler. He retired um, about a year and a half ago. So um, he made the drawing of Trump shortly after the election, and it's just a big portrait. Um, it's it that drawing gives me a great chance to have an interesting discussion with my students because it's honestly not a very flattering uh, portrait of our president. Um, he's kind of got his mouth in, a, in a, a kind of a twisted position. And so we, as artists, we have the discussion, is this a beautiful work of art about maybe a not so beautiful subject? You know, because if you look at the drawing, uh, man, it's, it's just going to blow you away because the skill of the drawing is, it, I mean, it's just incredible. My work is called Putin's Trump, and it's a marionette, and it is based off the, the inspiration came from their press conference when they were in Finland this last summer. I've always kind of thought that there was always somebody behind Trump pushing the buttons, uh, the hand represents Putin's tr hand, and it's a marionette. So a marionette is pulled by strings to make it move. And so that's how I got the idea. So the phone in the hand represents the social media addiction that I feel Trump has. It says hashtag Twitter, hashtag addict, hashtag sexist, you know, racist. Hopefully, if somebody comes in and they see the piece that they will, they'll look at it, they'll read my statement. And, you know, if they don't like it, that's okay. If they don't like it, that's okay too. You know, hopefully they'll go vote. The work, this piece is better than what I thought it would came out. You know, it started kind of out like a joke, but it came out better than what I first expected it to. Um, I, you know, I went back in and did some refined work about a month ago on it, so, and did some more work on the tie and the suit itself, and so, yeah, I, I'm proud of it. You know, it just, it's not something that makes me cringe all the time, so, it, you know, it's okay. So I did rough out the body, like on a bandsaw, but I hand carved it. It took me about four and a half weeks to hand carve it, and then to paint it and put it, put it all together. And that's that for the food and entertainment episode of the Campus Edge for fall 2018. Our students taking you places you might ha not have discovered. And reminded you of things you might have forgotten. If you want to see this episode again, tune in weekly at 11 a.m. or see previous shows at 6.30 p.m. on BCTV Channel 20. Or you can check them all out on our YouTube channel, Butler Student Media. This has been the, the Campus, Campus Edge.